Hey guys, welcome to the Garbage Time Podcast. I am your host, Katie Nolan. This is gonna be the first of two podcasts this week. We're gonna do a guest only podcast today, and then our Pick Your Poison podcast will go up on Thursday. But since it's guest only, let's welcome in our guest, SNL Weekend Update writer, Katie Rich. You can stop smiling. Please clap. <laughs> Jeb Bush, please clap. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's so good to see it's you. It's so good to see you. Thank you for coming back Thank here. Thank you for having me back. I don't know how we got you once. I don't know how we got you twice. I don't know how I got so lucky. Did you, did you keep leaving something here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it a I piece left of my, your heart? Uh, I left my sunglasses. <laughs> But you get stabbed if you leave. <laughs> Wait, didn't OJ, wasn't he trying to bring back sunglasses? Ron Goldman? Well, you got deep. Have you been watching on. that show? Yeah, it's oh. awesome. Yes, yeah, you haven't watched it. So I'm, I'm not refreshed in the details of the OJ Simpson case. I didn't want to watch it. I was very against it. I was like, this is really stupid. I know what happens. And then everyone at work was like, we got to watch it. Oh, yeah, you have to, I guess, for like. I mean, we know what happens, you know, but, but it's does, really good. Did he do it? Does he go know. to jail? I mean, they clearly think he did, like yeah. the writers. I haven't watched it yet. I would love to discuss this But we watched it with, with like 24-year-olds who are like, didn't know what was happening. Isn't that crazy? Like when like, you see on Twitter. I did not know who Marsha Clark is. The people are like, Titanic was based on a real story. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> yes. Did you know The Martian is not a true story? Wait, like, what? Stuff like that. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. Um, so currently, writer for SNL's Week in Update. Mm-hmm which is a job many people would love to have. But before we get into like how you got there, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Okay. Comedy. Uh, when did you first realize that you wanted to do that professionally? Um, I'm from Chicago, as you can tell mm-hmm. by my bird monster accent, the way that I talk. Um, it's not that bad. It's pretty bad. Uh, I'm sober, that's why it's not that bad. Oh, there it is. Um, but uh, we got to go on a field trip my freshman year in high school to Second City. That's a cool field trip. I know, and I remember my mom had to like sign something to like let us stay out past 11 or whatever. And when we were there, like even the cat, and like having been at Second City, if I had looked out and seen us, I would have been like, fuck this, this is the worst. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was, I, do, I don't know that now, but I mean, I know that now, but I didn't know that then. And, uh, the whole time I was like, what? Because it was <laughs> like, it was the show with like Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert oh, and wow. Amy Sedaris and like, who weren't anybody then. I right. mean, but just like, I remember being like, how is this a job? This is magic. And so that's. Congrats on fixing the speech impediment as you grew up. Oh, did I do it again? <laughs> oh, no. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that I was like, this is all I want to do. And then I was, I did it. And I didn't die, and so it was like, well, now what do I do? All I wanted was main stage at Second City. Yeah. Where I think most people are like, all I want is SNL, or all I want is this, and that was all I wanted. Was Set that. small goals. Yeah, that was my big goal. And so I knew ever since then, yeah. So how did you like start performing? My, um, I wanted to play basketball, because I've been this height since I was in like fifth grade. But I was very bad. Yeah. I was very bad. Mm. It was like, who's that Make-A-Wish kid that they're letting, <laughs> like, play? A really the, tall like, Make-A-Wish she's kid. She's very tall. <laughs> like, who's this 30-year-old that they're letting play? <laughs> and uh, so I think my mother, in a way to save her child from embarrassment and disappointment, was like, why don't you audition for a, a play? And I was like, no. And then I did, and I liked it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what play was it? It was something about Snow White, and I wasn't Snow White. I was the evil queen. Which doesn't make any sense. Because I, looking at you, I'd be like, hello, Snow there's White. There's Snow White. I know. It's exactly, like, I, when you walked in, I was like, wait. Is that Snow White? I thought we had Katie Rich today. Also, I had little tiny men following me around. You did, like, did they leave? Because they're, yeah, they're not they're here gone. anymore. Well, you can't see them. Oh. But they're here. Because they're so tiny. Because they're so small. Uh, but so you've mentioned in the past that you have anxiety, you struggle with anxiety. So it's interesting to me to think that you would get up on a stage yeah, and well, want to perform. Yeah, I... I they, um, the the thing that people, they're, they're always like, why would you want to improvise? Because that's literally the scariest thing in the world. It's very anxious. But it's not. Because they they were, in, in World War II, in like, in Dresden, when it was getting bombed, people who had horrible anxiety actually felt good. Like, they were like, oh, everyone's at my level. Oh, I like, <laughs> I'm You're not all feeling what I feel. All right, this is dope. I feel this way all the time. So I think it's kind of like that. It's like because there's nothing, the only thing I can worry about is what comes next and the person I'm talking to and 
and and that's my whole job. All the other existential garbage that makes me go insane isn't there. And then, so actually, it's I find it very calming to be on stage because everybody else is anxious. So you're like, ha ha, I do this every day. Welcome to what I deal with. Yeah, well, I think I think more just because that's my only. I, it's so clear what my job is. Yeah. It's so clear what I have to do. Uh, so the first time you did improv. Mm -hmm. Easiest thing ever, or was it like no? It's so hard. Horrifying. It's still really hard. It's always hard. Yeah. It's just, it's something that you. It doesn't get easier. You just get better at it. Like it's it's, it's because the thing is when people take improv classes, it's you're going through psychological therapy as well. Because if you talk too much or you don't listen or that's probably what you do in real life. So you have to deal with your own shit to become a better improviser, Ew. which sucks. Yeah. Ew. I know. I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. Then don't. Okay. You don't have to. You're how doing much of fine. it? How much of it depends on the people that you're improvising with? Because I feel like if there's a guy up there that sucks. Well, in a perfect world, your goal is to make everyone else look good, right? But that's hard. But um, <laughs> yeah, it, it it's it. You get used to performing with certain people, but you can improvise with anyone, really. Anyone? Yes, anyone. Anyone? Anyone. All right. Because I've gone and seen improv shows, and you know that there's, like, the two guys that are, like... Thank you for saying it's the guys. It's always the guys <laughs> that think they're so funny. Oh, yeah. But they never yes and anyone. No, they suck. And you just look at them like, dude, you're blowing this entire bit. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad for everyone around them that's like, no, we're on that boat, remember? Okay. We are all on a boat. Yeah. And they're like, nope, this is my Antonio Banderas impression. Yeah. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you do when you have a person like that? How do you make that person look better? You kind of agree with them. Ugh. You just like go with what they're doing. Ugh. You just kind of go with what they put out there. You, it's just like in real life, right? Like you can't change someone. You can only change the way you react to them. You can only deal with how they are as opposed to trying to change them. So you just kind of deal with it. It's like a relationship. Yeah, man. It's like every man I've ever dated. Yeah, you can't change them. Can't change you them. You just deal with it. You try, though. I mean? Lord, we try. Lord, we try. Uh, so people talk about Second City. It's like a big, mm -hmm. amazing thing. Like, what's the path up through it like? Do you start at 101? You have to take your first class? I never took to classes there. Really? Actually, I took, yeah, um, I took classes at a different improv theater, but like what happens is you kind of, they, the producers get to know you uh, just from doing stuff in the city, and then you audition, and then you become an understudy on the touring company, and then you get moved up to the touring company, and then hopefully you get moved up to a stage. But there's so many different ways to do it. Some people get put on stages just from an audition. Some people get it. It's very different now. There's not a real, it's not like med school where you can be like, oh, I take this test and I do this and I do that and now I'm a doctor. You can go from like bottom to top, like just immediately. Like you can audition instead of having to go through this progression. It just happens. Mm, I mean, you have to. What happened? What did you no. do? How did yours go? The first thing I did was I was on a ship for four months. Second City does like cruise cru ships. Yes, so I was on a cruise ship for four months. That's fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and so I did that. And then when I got done with that, we were. Uh, but that's good money, right? Cruise ship performers, like I have my friends, I have friends who majored in dance. Mm -hmm. That when they graduated, were like, I either want to be like in Alvin Ailey's company, right, or on Carnival Cruise Lines yeah. <laughs> because it pays. It does pay. Does it pay for comedy? Yeah. Yeah. It, it did. It, at the time, it was like the most money I'd ever made. Yeah. Um, but, and you're not paying rent. Your food is technically included. And people can't leave. You, <laughs> yeah, like you can't, I mean, you could if you want to commit suicide, but like it's, it, it's like, a, it's a floating prison is what it is. But like, I remember one time we were on the ship and we, it, we saw, well, I saw a Dr. Pepper on the drink cart and there was no Dr. Pepper. There was only like certain things. And I was like, there's a Dr. Pepper on the ship. I know there is. And we like, it, for a week, we like tried to find this Dr. Pepper. That's how sad your life gets. Wow. Yeah. That's it didn't how. like dock anywhere and let you off. Yeah, but <laughs> it would, it would be place. Well, we would do these long, long, long cruises. Like we actually crossed the Atlantic. Oh my God. So it was like, yeah. 
And you miss things that you don't even do. Like I remember missing going to the grocery store and I get my groceries delivered. But I would miss that. Like you there's so many things you don't even realize you miss until it's gone. But um So, so you're on a ship. So I was on a ship yep. and then I came back to real life and I and then yeah, and then I understudied for the touring company. And it went it went that way. But the thing was they were very like I was still dealing with anxiety a lot and it was it was preventing me from doing certain things and so um the producers there were always very upfront with me, like, we don't you're not ready to do this. Like you're not ready to perform eight shows a week, work six days a week. And Eventually, I became ready to do that, and I don't know if I, if I didn't have that goal, I don't know if I would have worked as hard to get to where I am. How, how do you work hard at improv comedy? Because there, it's, it's a thing, it's a real thing, but it's, it's hard for people to, like an athlete will go to the gym and will lift more and right. will run and will train. But for, for you, how do, like when you say you worked really hard at that goal, how do you work harder? at funniness well the more you try to be funny the less funny you'll be mm -hmm, i guarantee mm -hmm. it yeah um so it's more just uh you, you know you practice people are like how do you practice improv if it's made up on the spot but you do you practice you rehearse um and you do it's it's just like doing practice drills it's just not a show yet it's just not a game yet you're just you know in a classroom or whatever um but the more you can be settled and open as a human, the better you're going to be at improv. So it's a lot. It's yeah. kind of a whole thing. And it's like a whole psychological thing. Mm -hmm. Ugh. It's exhausting. It's pretty dope. Yeah. It like, is kind of dope. It is. Like, you get better at your job, but you're also, like, a better person. Yeah, dude. And, like, you're a pretty good person. Well, there are some f full hot holy nightmares that are also good at improv, but... So it doesn't, you know what I mean? But doesn't like, always it translate. It doesn't always translate. But um, for the most part, yeah. Like, it's pretty cool. Speaking of holy nightmares, it's like a team sport improv. Yes. But I feel like at a place like Second City, it would have to be really competitive. Is it as competitive as my brain thinks it is? When you're there, uh, it's as competitive as you want it to be. Yeah. Because it's, um, you're so different from everyone else that if all you care about is, what you're doing and you don't focus on yourself you, you'll 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 just disintegrate you'll go insane because what you're doing is different from what I'm doing because we're completely different people but we have to do them together yeah which is great and there's only so many spots yeah and if I want your spot but I also have to work with you isn't mm -hmm. that hard to have like a so like a frenemy vibe or is everyone just really friends and chill I would love to say that everyone's really friends and and are very chill but it's it's just like anything else, you know. There's people clash and and there's jealousy and stuff like that. I was very lucky that the casts that I was with, we just lucked out and we ended up being very very close. That being said, you fight like a family, where you're just like, I will never talk to that person again. And then like an hour later, you're like, Do you want to get a drink? You know, you know <laughs> what I mean. Like it's it's yeah. just stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Also, like looking back on it. I'm sure when I was in it, it was worse. But now that I look back, I'm like, why was I ever upset? It's just like anything yeah. in life. Yeah, like everything feels like a much bigger deal yeah. than, it, than it is. Yeah. Do you have any scenes or sketches that you specifically remember that you tried to do that just did not go well at all? Yeah. Because the stories of the good ones are great, but I like when shit goes wrong. Like, well, Do you remember when shit went wrong? Speaking of shit, yeah. I can tell you of this was... I had a, a blackout, and a blackout is just like the short, very short scene, right? So it's like a line, and then basically the joke and the lights go out. And they're hard. They're very hard. And I had one that I was like, this is the best thing of all time. And I would do it. I had done it, like, we had tried it, like, twice, and it didn't go over well at all. And then I remember one time the director was like, okay, so for this set, which is the improv set after the actual show. And that's how we learn. That's how we write stuff. We just put it up in this set. He was like, everyone can do whatever they want. So you can pick something and you can do whatever you want. And I was like, anything? And he was like, don't do that blackout. 
<laughs> like he knew already and I was like, I don't know, maybe I will. Because <laughs> I truly felt like this was gonna work. But I'll do the blackout for you. Okay. It was uh, myself and two other women and we were in the military and I was complaining about how it's hard to get respect as a, as a woman in the military. And they were like, yeah, we don't really have a problem with it. And I was like, well, I do. And then the sergeant comes in and he's like, all right, everybody, you know, roll call. And they say their name, say their name. And then I was like, Major Dump reporting for duty. <laughs> and I thought, I was like, why? That's the funniest thing of all time. Major Dump reporting for duty. <laughs> Didn't crush? How did that not crush? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone was confused and like, are they trying to make a point about like sexism and then it's a shit joke <laughs> and it's not even a good one and like that never went anywhere and then one oh that never went anywhere and then one time I tried to do this scene it was one of those scenes where I was like I came into rehearsal and I was like hey this is like gonna change the world <laughs> I guarantee you this is a classic like people are gonna look back on this and be like wow she wrote that and I really felt that way. And it was this like improv scene where the audience was part of the, we were filming like this sweeping war epic and the audience was all extras. And it was gonna be this like, I was like, this is so fucking good. I'm so good. <laughs> and uh, we did it and it was just a, just a hot duke. It was so <laughs> bad. The, it was like 20 minutes long. The whole audience was confused. <laughs> Um, no one know what was, knew what was happening. At one point, someone was thinking Negro spiritual. At one point, what? like, I was, like, it, it just, I was playing Robert E. Lee. Like, it just, it was so bad. And uh, it was such a humongous failure. And it's one of my favorite, uh, it's, it was one of my favorite things that ever happened. That sounds like a mess. Because we all failed together so yeah. spectacularly. You went through it. We did, and even afterwards, people in the cast were like, I think we can make it work if we go, and it was like, no, <laughs> this, you cannot make this Just work. Just kill it. It's major Never dump. Never coming it's back. It's a major dump. <laughs> reporting for, for duty. Reporting for duty. It's great. It's I don't great. see, I'm, I don't see how that didn't Well, crush. I think the audience might have been too sophisticated. Yeah, usually they are. There wasn't enough bachelorette parties at, yeah. at that one improv at that show. One, yeah, it was all professors from UFC, that one show, who were like, this is not, this is, this is not. I'm above this. I'm above this. And they had their pipes. Uh, yes. So SNL, how did you how did you get that job? How do how um, did one get that job? Well, I'm going to tell you. There's three steps, and if you do these three things, you are guaranteed to be on SNL. Okay. Write these down. So everyone, write this down. Now put up a technical difficulties thing, <laughs> and then we'll come back. And that's it. Those are wow, the three that's, steps. It's that easy. It's that easy. Wow. So if anyone wants to do it, just, just do those one, three things. One, two, three. You laid it Isn't right out. Isn't that so easy? I had no I thought it was like one, two, three, four, five, nope. six, six, And the second a, six, one's B. fun. Yeah. The second one is fun. I do that once a month anyway. We, so it's but like, we do until yeah. we hit like uh, 50 or right. 55. Right, right. Um, no, it's, I think it's, it's, it's completely different for everyone. Like I, they, they kind of knew me. I had auditioned there and then um, Cecily Strong was a friend of mine and she understudied me at Second City and she's fabulous and wonderful and um, they were looking for another writer and she recommended me and it, it went from there. What made you want to write instead of do like be in front of the camera? Um, that is, was not my choice, yeah. but uh, I don't say that in a negative way. Um, Cause I do both, that's the thing. Like right. I, I consider myself both things. Yeah. So right. I think a lot of people are like, oh, you only write? And it's like, it's so much, it's much better. Well, it's, it's also like, what do you mean I only write? Like yeah. that's, then they say it. Like, what do you, how do you think they know what to say? <laughs> You dumb bitch. <laughs> That's good. I knew there was more. Um, what was your first day at SNL like? Oh my God, it was, it was great. Um, they were like, so you can get in, like, you can come in at like people come in between like eleven thirty and noon or whatever. So first of all, I was like, what? This is great. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, I'm gonna get there at ten thirty, cause I am. I just want them to know how serious I was. No one's there. I get there. <laughs> no one's there. Our, what are the, the producer, this man, Scott Weinstein, who is the only reason Weekend Update works every week. He's phenomenal. He's our, he's our main guy. He was there and was like, oh, hi. 
I mean, I guess I can tell you what happens, but you're, why are you here? You, you weird, weird, sad girl. Um, and so then I kind of just like, was like figuring everything out. And then every Monday we have a meeting. So we had like our little topical meeting and Seth Meyers was there at the time. And during the meeting he was like, we have a new writer. And I was like, cool, I wonder who it is. And, uh, and then he said my name and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Ah! And I thought I was gonna have a full-blown panic attack because it was like you could like I was like hovering over myself, but also was in myself and and uh, yeah, and then it became a job. Crazy how and that happens, good, you know. And then the next thing you know, you're like, oh, oh, I work here. I work here. How many of you are there? Like at that point, when you're the new writer, is there a table of like thirteen people? It's like people? all the writers oh. are in this room. Yeah. So there's like twenty of us, I oh, guess. That's cool. And it was just like. Ah! Do you remember the first joke you wrote that got on air? Mm -hmm. Which one was it? I do. It was... Was it a poop joke? No. Damn it. No. Well, I, <laughs> I don't... I've told this story before, and I don't... I'm not throwing Seth Meyers under the bus, because he doesn't deserve to be under a bus. He's... He's a good not, friend of mine, so if you could just respect... You guys are... I mean, you were just on his show. Yeah. You looked great. Super you did nervous. great. Oh, thank you. You truly did great. Oh, thank... I freaked the fuck out. I was Why? freaking out. Because I've never done anything like that before. You did great. Thank you. I thought you seemed... You were, you were very you, but you were also like... When he asked you about some of the heavier stuff you talk about, I thought you handled it very gracefully. Thank you. It was lovely. We were going to come down and say hi, but we couldn't. We I know, were, we were looking for you, but I we get were. nervous in that building because it's all actual TV shows. And so I didn't know, like, our building has, like, a school in it. and a, They film pornos here. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is not I have a, no doubt. It's they not film like pornos here. pop upstairs to, you know, a real television show. It's just us in, like, a closet. But isn't he wonderful? Oh, he's great. He's, he's wonderful. But so throw him under the bus. But I would like to insult him. No. Um... He, there's certain, there's certain like words he can't say, which is fun. Like everyone has that. Um, and dachshund was a word he would always screw up. How often is that coming up in conversation? Probably never, but it came up for me because it was my first joke and it was about a, a couple that, a lesbian couple that was splitting up and were fighting over custody of the dog. And the joke was like, the dog was excited to get two Christmases or something. And I, and I was like, I was like, this joke rules. I'm excited for this to be like my joke. That is my first joke. And at dress rehearsal, Seth was like, I just can't really say that word. And so they were like, all right, well, we'll cut the joke. And I was like, no. What? <laughs> but that's what happens. Like, just say wiener dog. No, dude. You can't no. be like, you can't wiener derail it. lesbians and wiener dogs. Because then you're like, where is this? is clearly going somewhere else. Mm. But um, I... That's that was like a nice intro into like you can't be precious about anything you write because simply that word being weird is through no fault of the joke. It's yeah, out. that's a good lesson to learn pretty quickly. Yeah, it was awesome. So you were I mean, after that, did you ever worry about, you know, I wrote this many jokes this week and only one made it or yeah, a I used joke to, of mine hasn't made it in. Yeah, however long? I used to like kind of go insane about it. I used to like. I would be like, well, all right, there's this many people in this many spots, and so hopefully, you know, statistically you should have this. And it's just not really like that. We, we're a team, and, and things are, the whole segment, it's basically like producing a 20-minute show every week, right? A show within a show. What's that like? Which I think you guys know what that's like. Um, no, genuinely, we don't. What is that like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's cameras. I mm. mean, you don't have any cameras No, here, we got GoPros. Which is fun. Um, they count. This is just like a practice run, but uh, yeah. So, so, um, so it, it it's not competitive in that way. I could see how it could be, but I'm also working with truly the best joke writers on the planet. So, it's like running with Kenyans. <laughs> like, you're just trying to keep up, and and just by running with them, you're getting better. That's a really good analogy. Kenya, yeah. Yeah. 
I just wanted to bring up our president. It was good. Uh, so like how the process of writing jokes, I'm so curious. Do you go off into a corner and like write them? Do you sit at a table with people? Yeah, and talk kinda. We do kinda go into this looks really comfortable. It it is and it isn't. I sprained my ankle yesterday. Oh, that's right. I can't put any like pressure on it in any sort of She a true fool. She sprayed her ankle bowling. <laughs> it was after bowling. I was oh, leaving the bowling alley. Just true trash after my own Stepped heart. Stepped right into a pot I was hole. in a bowling league when I was in like fifth grade. And I remember I would wait, like the day couldn't, the day went slow, slower than any day ever when I knew we had bowling that Did you afternoon. have your own ball? Yeah. And like a bag? I had my own bag, my own ball, shoes. my own shoes. Mm. That I got for Christmas and went fully insane. Which, uh, what color was your ball? Blue. How many pounds? <laughs> The look on your face when it dawned <laughs> on you of like, oh my god! My parents gave me a blue ball for Christmas when I was ten. <laughs> I had no chance. None. You spent the rest of your life giving it back to the men of the exactly. world. Exactly. <laughs> I was very good at it. I uh, assume it was like sixteen pounds. Like I that's was a lot I was of such pounds. a big kid. You know, I, not big, but I was so tall. Like I, I'm assuming I just was like, like it was sort of like the Flintstones. I just like chucked it. Um, Were you good? No. no. But then I, w then I got better. That's how it I goes. I ended up getting better, yeah. Yeah. But I was not good at first. No, 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 I was not. Um, it's a weird thing to be good at. Like, I'm really good at bowling. It's like, maybe just keep okay. it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't really brag, necessarily. Like, <laughs> we used to watch bowling on TV on Saturdays. That's a thing. At my house. Really? Yeah. And I remember being really stoked about it. Whatever. So, where what was did the we question? get it? I know. Um, oh, your process for writing jokes. Oh yeah. Well, we get um, we get setups every day. So, the wonderful Scott Weinstein, he gives us he he scours the news, and we get uh, setups, which are basically like if any joke, like why did the chicken cross the road? Right. We our why did the chicken cross the road is like Bernie Sanders interrupted Hillary at the debate. Monday. That's a huge help. Just to get that. When he... To not have to do I that yourself. When I found out that that was what happened, yeah. I was like, I've never been happier. Like, That's I was amazing. Like, yeah, dude. It's it's so nice. It's such a... He, he's so good at it. And so... Can you change the wording of them if you want absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And, um, and then it's just a matter of like, well, what's the punchline then to that? Mm. What is... You have to think about what does the audience know about this? What does the audience know about these people, about this story? Because you only have, you have like two lines. So it's not like John Oliver where he gets to do a half hour thing where he can go in depth with stuff and explain stuff. Like we kind of are dealing with what you already know. Like you know Trump is a asshole and you know he's rich. And Wait, you know, what? Did you not know that? How, like how rich? He's got like a lot of money. Shit. Yeah. I should pay attention to yeah. politics. Well, that's not politics. No. Um, so it's it's such an ins it's such an insane skill. Like it's such I know. a skill that's and it not fascinates worth me. anything anymore. So you else. get the setups when like Monday at. What we get time? them every day. We get okay. setups every day okay. when we come in. And you have to write jokes by when. And then we write jokes that we then turn in the next day when we come in. Okay. Except for Fridays where we get like five hours to write jokes for Friday. And so in those five hours, what are you doing? Like headphones on, in a corner alone? Yes and no, like we do that sometimes, but then I, I people I'm sure, sorry everybody, like I like <laughs> to talk. So, and I know, I can tell when they're like, just Please shut stop. up, just shut up. But like it helps me come up with, because of, I learned to write through improvising, mm. it helps me to write to actually talk about it. Um, and so that's, I'll come up with jokes that way, just like through talking, my conversation with someone. People must love that so much. They don't, and they'll leave, they can leave the room. I don't get insulted if, if someone just gets up and leaves. They're great. I do work with, you can leave. I don't care. I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. There's been so many times where I've just been talking for three minutes and I'll be like, no one is even in here. And I'm like, but I worked it out. Do you also get to work on like the characters that they do on Weekend Update? So when yeah. Cecily Strong does um, the girl, girl you don't want to talk to at a yeah, party? Yeah, we, um, 
usually we have like her and Colin write those mostly, but we will do, we'll always pitch jokes for that. Um, the Taryn does Jebediah Atkinson, the critic. Mm -hmm. We, we write that one. Um, update writes that but for the most part it's one of the sketch writers and a cast member that do it and then we'll uh, we'll pitch on it but sometimes we don't do anything with it like sometimes someone will just come in and they have that and that's their thing and and they go from there so is there one that you have worked on that you like or are proud of or no you just they're like sort of a thing you don't really care oh no I love it like um Working with, we got to work with like Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson on that Zoolander. They came in and did that, and that was so fun. They were so nice and so just like up for anything. They were, they had been on a 92 hour flight and were like completely jet lagged. Wow. And I know, That's, I know. They, so they flew to, they went to Mars. Wow. And, um, and like, they they were so great, and it was so fun to get to, to work on something like that. Yeah. And, it's still surreal to to write something and be like, they said the thing I, I wrote. Whoa. That's crazy. Cool. Ben Stiller said a thing I wrote. That's crazy. Neat. That is neat. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big sports fan. Yeah, man. We both, did we do that Are at you? the same time on purpose? Or did, so. would, like, is this just? I think it's just like a cool thing. One of our setups. Wow. I have to say, <laughs> there is a town in Maine that, is trying to rename a road because the sign keeps getting stolen and the road is Katie Crotch Road. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just trying to wallpaper my entire room exactly. Katie Crotch signs. Yes. So I've taken four of them. Right. And it's that like that was a setup that we got and I was like, well, I mean, I'm gonna write twenty jokes on that. I mean clearly, like no one should be writing on this but me. But yeah, Katie Crotch Road. Yeah. We don't have much time to save it. No. I hope they change it to Katie Crotch Avenue. <coughs> That's my joke! Was that funny? Good. Yay! That was oh my good. god, edit that if we if, if that's actually on the show. <laughs> That's a good joke. I like that joke. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm into it. Is it hard for you to get sports jokes on the show? Because you said you've got to think of what people know. Yeah. And you've got to, I guess, always assume sports jokes are hard because there's, like, diehard sports fans. But even then, they only sometimes know their teams and stuff. It's hard, dude, because it's, like, especially being in New York, like, I always want to, I always want to do a Cubs joke. Right. yeah. But you have to make it the Mets. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. Because we're a New Yorker. You have to keep it kind of centric like that. And then... Like, for football, like, the thing that people know about football now is, like, brain damage and domestic violence. Huge comedy topics. Which is, like, like laughs, it's laughs, such laughs. a bummer. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. such a bummer. Mm -hmm. Like, we wrote this commercial parody for Keenan of the DirecTV ads where it was, like, him and then him in five years. And it was, like, it was, it was just a bummer. Like, it was funny, but it was also, like, people don't want to be told that that's really what's happening. Yeah. So, so getting jokes, sports jokes in is hard. Yeah, it, because it's not, people don't know that much about it. Like, they know who LeBron is. Mm -hmm. They know that Derek Jeter, like, gets a ton of ass. Yeah. They know A-Rod. They know Steroids. that people in Boston call A-Rod a queer. Basically, if it's any Boston sports joke, That's it's everything like, there is. and then so they is it, said queer. Do you play more to the audience when you're writing jokes or to people at home? Because if you're doing, like, a Mets joke and that crushes with the audience, it might make, you know, the laughter might make people at home be like, oh, that was funnier than if I... Now, Katie, you've really hit on something really fun and cool about Saturday Night Live, and that is... When you're doing a live show, you have to be concerned with the audience, but you also have to be concerned with the audience at home, right? Mm -hmm. So you see something like um, Key and Peele, that's taped and edited sketches. We don't have that. They're, right. I mean, we do. We have some, but for the most part, they're live. Yeah. So you do have to think about both. We sometimes, like, we, my friend Pete wrote, he's the head writer, and he wrote this joke that was so funny about a bodega, and it was just kind of one of those things that it's like, that's going to kill in the audience, but people don't know what a bodega is necessarily. Unless they're in like New York. Exactly. Yeah. You have to think of the flyover states. That's what they're called, which is sad because that's where I'm from. Mm. 
Well, Chicago is like a fly into catch a connecting flight state. Exactly. You don't necessarily <laughs> fly into, miss your connecting yep. flight, crying out over at the airport, eat at that Burger King, eat, yeah. be sad, and then drink, and then fly go, again. And then fly again. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, so you got to do it. It's like, an, would you say it's like 50 50 balance of both? Because at the same time, if the audience is dying laughing at something and you're at home watching it, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be dumb and not yeah. get this. Yeah. Those flyover states might be like, oh, if they like it in New York, I should yeah. really like this joke. Yeah, but it, the, on the other side, too, like, you don't want to sound elitist, right? Mm. What's your favorite joke you ever wrote that got cut? Oh, it's the waffle taco joke. I've so, it's, it's, uh, you can't, I mean, you could say it here, but you couldn't really say it there. It's when Taco Bell finally was serving breakfast. Finally. Finally. We were all we waiting all, with bated breath. Remember the breakfast breath. wars? That, re that really was like a real thing. And, uh, I know, we're so fat and gross. And, uh, it was like Taco Bell's serving 13 new breakfast items, including the waffle taco, which is a waffle shaped like a taco with eggs inside, and not as I had assumed, what occurs when a woman wears fishnets without underwear. <laughs> that got cut? Yeah, man. Fucking prudes. And it was so funny because then we even like went to Urban Dictionary and we're like, and we're like, it's not on there. Like, oh, no way. You truly. Did I, you make it? Did you write it in? I mean, I wrote it and I submitted it and, and it, I mean, you're not going to put that on air. No, I mean like to Urban Dictionary. Like, did <laughs> no, you go? No, man, that's mine. Isn't it like Wikipedia? Can't you just like write whatever Probably. you want? Probably. Yeah. Maybe I will. If someone do that, please. Urban Dictionary's really gone downhill with its integrity. Like, I can't trust that that wasn't just like written by somebody else. You know what I mean? know, man. They really should vet for that stuff. So how do you know, I mean, that one, obviously, that joke's a little, you, you know it's not appropriate, but how do you know where the line I is? I don't know, though. You, That's yeah, the thing. You just, like, submit them into the void and you hope. You don't. I mean, you know, like, you're not going to be like, dude, these are all N-word jokes, and it's going to crush. I mean, you <laughs> know that, but, like, there's sometimes, like, you can get away with stuff, and the thing is, is, like, who's saying it? Like, Colin can get away with stuff that mm. Che can't get away with, and vice versa, yeah. and... You know, if Kate McKinnon comes on or Cecily comes on and does something, they can get away with stuff. So it's also the voice that's saying it as well. It's like the medium is the message. The medium's part of the message. And, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, you know, but but you can go pretty. Colin's a big fan of Jared Fogle jokes. Ooh. And he's he can get away with them. Why? Because he looks like it. No, I don't know. Because <laughs> I think his glee... He's just sweet and innocent and happy. He, it's his glee, and he's just so, like... Like, he didn't mean it. He, you he's know happy. I, it's, you know, he's not being mean. He got what he deserved. He's in prison. You know, like, he can just... He can do it. He has such a happy face. I know. I'm he's pretty sure it, it emanates, like, light. His face. He kind of does. It's just so glowy. He's a little doll. Is he pregnant? He yeah. glows. Yeah. Uh, the 40th anniversary special mm -hmm. was insane and amazing. Mm -hmm. You were there. What was your favorite, like, memory from that night? Like, what was the coolest thing that happened? Um, I like to, I, so, so it, it truly was everyone who is alive that has done anything in comedy was there. Yeah, I was, I didn't see you, but I was there. No, I know. I just didn't, like, I was, like, looking for you. I didn't know you I yet. know. And I was kind of drunk. Like, oh, and we didn't know. Like, we busy. Blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I was there. But you were the... hanging out with Jim Belushi, I think, yes. actually. Yes. Like, a well, ton. I wasn't going to tell anybody. Yeah. But, like, yeah, a ton. But, yeah. Um, so much. So much. But I was like, I don't really care because, no, I, don't say you don't care. <laughs> but I know what, I know how they do what they do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, they don't fascinate you because you do that. Yeah, like they're work. like it's cool, like they're it's just cool, and and but for me it was the athletes that were there that I was like, oh my god, and um, the Manning brothers were there, ooh, and I was like, well, this is it, I got, I have to talk to them, so I was like, I'll I'll go up to Eli first, which I think is probably a common thing that people say, I'll try with Eli and see see how that works, <laughs> and. Uh, I went up to him and I was like, hello. I was like, I'm, my name's Katie and I write for SNL. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember you. And I was like, you don't. You don't. I wasn't there, but he, that's how like polite and sweet they are. And full of shit. And full of shit <laughs> in a way that makes you comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not mm -hmm. in a way where you're like, fuck 
fuck you, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it was very much like, I remember you. I was on the we show. Never met. We You know, very sweet. Yep. And so I took a picture with him. And then I wanted to talk to Peyton so bad. But, uh, and this is something that is a, a true statement I can make. I couldn't talk to him because he was talking to Bon Jovi. And Bon Jovi, like, would not, I don't, I don't know if they were, like, planning an arena football team together or something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But they were really hitting it off. And uh, finally, Bon Jovi left to go, I don't know, do something people from Jersey do. And so I was like, I'm going. So I, like, went over. And as I was going, Tim Meadows was also going to talk to Peyton. Uh-oh. And I know Tim from Chicago, and so I, I, I very rude. I, I was like, no, like, no. <laughs> and Tim, Tim, also being a kind and normal human, was like, I'm sorry, do you guys, do you know each other? I'm so sorry, I don't want to interrupt. And Peyton said, yeah, we went to high school together. <laughs> and I melted into like a little pool with little eyeballs and hair. <laughs> and then I came back and... Uh, and we like talked for a bit and took a picture and it was great. And then it wasn't until a couple days later, I was like, he's a lot older than me. Like, <laughs> why did everyone buy that? Like, hey, that's actually not a nice, cute compliment. That sucks. Mm. Like, but it was, that's like, that's one of the things that'll flash before my eyes before I die is Peyton Manning like doing a bit with me that I, I didn't even know it. So it was, it was, it was, he's glorious. Is he glorious? That's yes. good. He's That's glorious. Good. That's good. Is his head that big in person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, real big head. Yeah. How do you feel about his retirement? I haven't watched the speech yet because I think I'm gonna cry. My Aww. my husband really he's my husband's an Eagles fan, which I know. But <laughs> the one thing we agree on is we are a Peyton Manning household, and uh, he 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 was fighting back tears watching it, and so I know. I mean, I cried when Brett Favre retired. The first time. Which time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, by the second time, I was like, get out of here. But it's like when someone keeps sneezing, you're like, I'm not saying I'm not God bless you anymore. <laughs> Stop sneezing. You know what's the funny thing to say if someone sneezes? What? Shh. <laughs> I just think that's so, like, what a dick thing to do. Shh. <laughs> Speaking of influential people that you've met through SNL, you got to meet Obama. Barack Obama. Oh, see, I thought it meant I John know. Obama, and so I am I've no never longer met prepared. John. I know. John for Obama. This. No. I, I did. Um, Cecily Strong hosted, or she was the speaker at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. She crushed and she it. She fucking crushed, crushed it. And uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the writers for her on that. And so before the dinner, we got to like, there was a exclusive little party kind of thing where you could like meet Michelle and Barack and take a picture with them. And uh, they let us garbage humans go there, which I don't know why. Like, they truly were, you could tell, like, the, the Secret Service was like, what is this? Because it was, like, Bradley Cooper and, like, the people from House of Cards. And then, like, <laughs> you fucking. What did you wear? Three-eyed zombie. I rented a dress, a Calvin Klein dress. And it, it's probably one of, I looked really good, to, yeah. be, to be fair. Yeah, um, that is fair. But anyway, we, so, so you had to go up, like, they, let you go up and take a picture with them, but you were assigned, like, you had to have a card that said your name and what you did, so then his people would be, uh, and then they would be like, this is Katie, she's one of the writers, blah, blah, blah. And we were one of the last people to go, myself and, and Pete Schultz, the head writer for Update, we were two of the last people to go. And so when I got up there, he was like, now I heard that the other writers were telling me that if uh, anything bombs, you wrote it. And I was like, my president's got jokes <laughs> and he's fucking ripping on me right now. This is the best day of my life. And I, 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 res I, was, I responded as though you said, like, I was like, that was super rude. Like, I just, <laughs> that, that was, what a rude thing to say. And he just was laughing. And I was like, I have to tell you, I'm from 80th and Pulaski, which Ooh. is the south side, you know, and in Chicago, you say the intersection you're from instead of like the town, like a normal person. And he turned to Michelle and he was like, Michelle, she's from Chicago. She's our home. She's from Edith and Plasky. She's our home girl. And Michelle was like, yeah, she's our home girl. And then I melted into a little puddle with eyes and hair. And then I came back. And uh, 
and we took a picture and it was the best so that as we were leaving I like grabbed Michelle's hands and I was like I want to tell you that we love you and oh, she was we? like I don't know just I people. think S- I think I was trying to say SNL mm. but like, I-, I think I was mostly saying like me and Cecily which she knew and then she was like I love you guys too liar she doesn't know you I think she meant like SNL again mm. like I think mm. okay. you know yeah. and uh and then they whisked us away uh, because they were like full psycho, <laughs> full psycho needs to get away from the most powerful person in the world and his wife. Um, but they were glorious and they were beautiful and, and kind and funny and normal. And it made my parents like almost like them. Oh, like they did not vote, but they were like, they, they, they were, like, were very okay. good to my daughter, you know? Like, so yeah. they wouldn't vote for him or support him, but they're going to like, they're not going to call him. Oh, bummer. They're not going to be like, thanks like they're Obama. Not gonna fu- they're not yeah. gonna, they take their no Obama sign down. Not going to demand like a birth certificate. 100%. But they're not going to vote for him. No. That's, you can't. I might vote for him again this year. I'll be honest. She was write him in. I might write him I in. I don't know. What are so, do? Barry, if you're out there. He is. In, uh, not listening at all. But if you're out there, we, uh, <laughs> you're very, very cool. Very, very cool. Speaking of 80th and Pulaski. Is that what, what you said? Yeah, dude, that Chicago. was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cubs. Cubs, man. How are you feeling about the Cubs? Feel great. You do? Yeah. You feel like they're going to... I wanted to wear, but I, I, couldn't have, I couldn't get it in time, but I wanted to wear the Try Not to Suck shirt. <laughs> so good. The jo- but I couldn't get it in time. So good. It's so good. I mean, it's a good slogan. They stole it from me in high school. They stole it but, from me every day yeah, when every I wake Every date up. I go on. Like, before like try go, not to suck. Try just not try not to suck. Try not to suck. Yeah. Like... But uh, I, I feel really good, which seems odd to say about the Cubs, but more because they're fun to watch again. And for a while, it was just Dudsville. Mm. Like, you would just go and you'd be like, I don't care. But the team itself is exciting and the people there are exciting. And, and, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm a very big Joe Madden fan. On the flip side of that, mm-hmm. teams that aren't fun. Dudsville, Matt Forte's gone. I don't know. Uh, you knew he was going to go, though, because yeah. Don Fox wants his own guys. They're starting over. They're, they're definitely starting over. How do you feel about that? About him leaving? Just about just your Bears in general. I'll always love the Bears. Uh, I'll always support Jay Cuddy. I mean, I have to. I support my quarterback. Um we're not there. It's not going to be fun for a while. Mm. But I, I, I get not what supposed to be fun. Football isn't fun. I mean, football's got what ten years tops before it's gone. Illegal. Yeah, but I. Yeah, I, it's it's it. I, I, I it kind of sucks. All right. Football in general is. Uh, it's getting depressing. Is getting really depressing. Mm-hmm. And as a female, it's also like. I don't know what to do anymore. I know. Because it's football, and I love it. It does not love us. It does not love us. No. But I grew up with it, and so uh, I don't know. So what do we do about I, we it? We just watch the 85 Bears. Like, on repeat? On repeat. We'll just watch 30 for 30s, but we won't watch actual football. Mm-hmm. It's tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough because my team's still kind of good, so, like, I want to, like... Still, they are, yeah, they're, yeah. like, always going to be good. Yeah. Well, till Tom goes, which is it's like 30 years out. So. I truly think he might not. Just could play forever. He might. Till he's like 70. Have you met him? No. God. You think you want to talk about puddle, eyeballs, hair. Really? I would just explode. I'd be so uncool. I met Gronk at the Super Bowl and I, was yeah. so uncool. How and, could, but he can't speak English. I know. But like, nor could I. Like, we were on the same level. Oh, so you did great. Like, you were like, Ugh, And he was like, Ugh. Like, you know what I mean? Like. I think the dumber you get around No, Rob. but I was just like, I did this with my hands, which was stupid. Be- like, I'm was like Beatles, super, I'm super nervous. Like I'm a huge he fan. Nice. And he just looked at me and was like, cool, cool. What, like, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you saying words? Cause he's, he's barely functional. I know, but so was I. I'm not a professional. Like people are like, yes, oh, you, you work are. in this industry. Why can't you be cool around those people? Cause I don't, when, I shouldn't, but that's, it's not that you, you are cool. You're cooler yeah. than you think. Mm. It's just in your own brain. Yeah. It's full Beatlemania. Yep. And I live in here. But, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. But can't outward, jump out of it's here. not. 
yeah. So if I met Tom Brady, I would. I think I, I would just like lick his face and be like, "I'm really sorry I did Great. that. I don't know why I did that. I'm That's really fine, so sorry." That's fine because we want to bite and eat things that like we love, right? <laughs> like I want to eat my dog. Yeah, you, you put its little mean? nose in your you mouth. Like, I, love I love you. Why do we do that? We want to eat things that we love. Why do we do that? I don't know. You know why? Why? Did you, when you were younger, did you read uh, Where the Wild Things Are? Were you raised on that book? Yes. And there's a line in it where he says, I'll eat you up, I love you so. That makes perfect sense. I just put it all together. That's why we eat things we love. I love cheeseburgers. Yeah, man. Jesus Christ. That all really did just click in my brain just then. All right, Garbage 10, I ask you 10 questions. They're kind of rapid fire, but you can elaborate on them if you want to, because you're funny, so you ready? Mm -hmm. What was your first AOL screen name? Flash Roxy. Ranch or blue cheese? Ranch. What's the first concert you ever went to? Meatloaf. Who's your favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. Do you put ketchup on your fries or on the side of the fries? On the side, I also put some salt on it, and then I sometimes put some mayo in it, you guys. I know. What's your guilty pleasure television show? Snapped, which is a whole half hour of a woman who has murdered her husband or boyfriend. Like real stories? Yeah. Do they do dramatic reenactments? No. Oh man. It's kind of, but not, that, that's not why. It's more of just like, I can't wait to see what drove this bitch crazy. <laughs> Remember seeing I didn't know I was pregnant? It's on. I yeah! I had a conversation in a meeting the other day with everybody about it, and they were like, what are you talking about? The yeah. reenactments in that are amazing. The reenactments in Sex Sent Me to the ER. Also amazing. Are amazing. I can't, I love that we. Yes, yes. We get it's each the other. Best. Uh, do you floss before you brush your teeth or after you brush your teeth? I floss randomly throughout the day. Sure. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Why? Because it's something in between two pieces of bread. What was the last movie you saw in the movie theater? Deadpool. Was it good? Yeah. Uh, last one. You're about to be put to death. What's your final meal? Entree, dessert, and beverage. I'm going to have macaroni and cheese. Probably with like chorizo in it. Mm. Or, or some sort of bacon in it. And then just for dessert, I'd probably have pizza. I'm not a real sweets person, so I'd probably have either pizza or like sliders. And then, as, yeah, and then uh, for a drink, I would drink Sprite. I don't know if I'd have alcohol. Why? I mean, I'd have alcohol. I'd drink vodka with a Coors Light Chaser, but I, I, I would have to have Sprite as well. I love Sprite. Like Sprite Zero or no. full on fucking Sprite? Full blown Sprite. Yeah. I love Sprite. It's good. It's so good, dude. Do yourself a favor and chill a can of Sprite, get very drunk, the next day, whip out that chilled can of Sprite and just chug it and you're gonna feel great. Okay. I love Sprite. A fountain Sprite is the best gift you could give me. Fountain soda is just much better it's than so any other good. type of soda. And when you get bad fountain soda, it makes the nothing worst. makes me angry. When the syrup to water ratio mm -hmm. is off in That's the wrong when I direction. That's turn into like a entitled white lady. Yeah. Because I'll be like, this is not. <laughs> you need so to change you your lines. You need to change the lines or at least clean them. Like, so annoying. But it's, you got to do what you got to do. But yeah. Katie Rich, thank you for being here. Katie Nolan, thank you for having this me. This was really great. Uh, that's it, everybody. Uh, we will be back with another podcast on Thursday, but be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, rate it, and leave a comment, but only if you're going to rate it five stars, and only if your and comment's going to be nice great. only say things, because yeah. don't write anything in the comment section that you wouldn't say to someone's face. Yeah. Say it to my fucking face. Because you're a coward uh. if you do that. <laughs> you're a fucking coward. Or you can listen to it on Art19, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or Google Play. Katie, thank you again for being here. Thanks to all of you guys for listening. Bye, love you, mean it. Yeah.